station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station. Yes, we are. All set. WGME TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Interview with Maine astronaut Chris Cassidy, who arrived on the job just a few days ago. So here we go. Hello, Chris. How are things looking from space today? Go. Go. Well, hello, Kim. Great to hear from you. Outstanding. It's such a great time uh, here on space. I'm having so much fun just uh, floating around and taking in the whole experience and trying to find, turn this place into my home. Awesome, Chris. It is so great to see you and hear you as well. Now, obviously, you're not floating right now. Can you tell us, are you tethered to something for this interview? Oh, no, I'm floating. There's the microphone, no hands, lifting my feet up. That is awesome. I'm, amazing you, I'm amazed that you can just look so stable. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about your journey there. You were on what, what they're calling a fast-track voyage. Just incredible, something that's been taking up to 45 days. You made it in under six hours. That is a new record. What was that like? Well, it was, it was a real privilege and an honor to be part of the crew that, that had the opportunity to do that. Um, but to be perfectly honest, the, the events that we did inside the cockpit are all the same that we normally would do on a rendezvous, just squished together with less of a break in between. Um, the real challenge for this type of rendezvous is on the planners beforehand, making sure that the space station is in exactly the right position, really tight tolerances on where the space station has to be, and the, the folks in Moscow who calculated the trajectory for the Soyuz, they had the real burden on, on making sure all of those numbers and really, really finite calculations were perfect. And we were, uh, just had to execute their plan, which was great. So timing was everything. Now, what were some of the advantages of being able to get there so quickly? I'm sure it, there are some advantages for you getting adjusted, but also you're able to carry certain items that you're going to be using for research and experiment, um, experiment with, so that was helpful too, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. For, for us as, as individual people, the, the space adaptation process inside the Soyuz, it can be a little uncomfortable on a two-day rendezvous because it, because it does sort of a, a slow spinning motion to, for its um, orientation to the sun. And that can be a little disorienting. If you hurry up and get to the space station, you can take care of all the adaptation right here on the space station where it's a little bit larger of a volume and a little more stable and the process is somewhat easier. Um, and just like you mentioned, on a short trip like that, we're able to carry some um, uh, experiments that might not uh, be able to survive the two days, if depending on what type of experiments it, it is. So it, just for those exact reasons that you mentioned, it's, it's a very helpful process. Chris, not your first time in space. You were aboard Endeavour in 2009. Now you're back on the International Space Station, which was under construction then. How are things looking? How's the ISS doing? You know, it's fantastic. It's, it's a much larger uh, facility than when I was here before. It was big when I was here, I thought. But we've there since then, they've added another node, which is a section of the space station from which we can add more modules, um, much like Tinker Toys when we were kids. You, you can, the nodes are the brown parts that you can connect various segments to. And uh, a node three, which also includes a really um, fantastic place to look down at the Earth called the cupola, right at the bottom of the space station with majestic views of the Earth below us. That just is breathtaking to be there. And that was not here when I was there. Um, so just fantastic. That sounds amazing. Speaking of Tinker Toys and kids, you've got a lot of people in York, Maine, who are watching your journey with a ton of pride, as are all of us in Maine. Uh, Chris, tell us a little bit, or would you like to give a shout-out to your hometown? Well, I'm just really, really uh, honored to represent the state of Maine, and in particular the town of York, um, where I grew up as a kid playing basketball on, on uh, Short Sands Beach there and mowing lawns in the summertime, just enjoying life as a, as a young boy in uh, southern Maine, just like many, many 
kids in school in that area right now. And never then did I imagine that I would be up here on the space station talking to a Portland TV station. Oh my goodness, that was the farthest from my mind that I could ever imagine. But I'm so honored to have the opportunity to do this and to, uh, to be in a position that um, folks in Maine and folks in New York are excited about and, and uh, just really, really special to me. Chris, it's, thank you, and we're proud of you as well. Uh, tell us a little bit, if you were to look out the window, what would you be seeing right now? Well, let's see. We have a map program on the computer, and I can see we just just a little bit ago crossed the equator on a southern track towards uh, kind of paralleling the western coast of South America. So if I looked out right now, I would see a very wide space of blue ocean in, in the, uh, the southern, southern Pacific Ocean. Um, not too long, we'll be crossing the tip of South America. And, uh, and in about another, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, we'll be cruising up through Africa. So it's, it's really kind of majestic and breathtaking how fast we cover such a great portion of the Earth. It's a pretty remarkable experience. Not many people are going to get to do what you do. But still, that doesn't mean people shouldn't strive and try to achieve their goals. You are a remarkable example of that. And I know it's something you don't take for granted, Chris. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Kim. Um, I've been fortunate to have great mentors and be at the right place at the right time, but also accompanied with that was a little bit of hard work along the way and knowing when to buckle down and, uh, and take studies seriously or take your work seriously, and that's served me well. Um, but really, it's the mentorship and the leadership that I've had in various aspects of my life from other people that have helped me get to where, they, where I am. So that's something that I try to provide to others now is that same opportunities that were afforded to me earlier in my career. Well, Chris, thank you so much for talking to us today, live from the International Space Station. We'll follow the progress and the mission itself, and hopefully when you look down at Maine, it won't be as white as it was, because we melted a lot of snow this weekend. So have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Kim. Take care. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. And thank you, WGME-TV station. Please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.